answering a few questions from my subscribers. I've been diving down to this very lengthy email I got from all of my subscribers, but the questions are so good that I thought I'd make a video out of them because they're really going to be helpful for not just this man who sent me this wonderful long list of questions, but also for you guys, hopefully. So he is a new graduate. He studied computer science and applied math. And he had a few questions about, uh, you know, how to get his, his career started. He had some questions there. So one of the questions he had, which I already did a video for, was on um, in systems analyst versus the business analyst. And I did that video, so go check that video out. It's right here that talks about what's the difference and which one should he be, be following. Then I did a video on how uh, how can he know if he'd be good as a business analyst? So I talked about that in that video, which is how do you know if you'd be good as a business analyst? That was one of his questions. And so you can go check that video out, which also talks about how to do that. And then I just did one that he asked, how could I guarantee that he got a foot in the door as a business analyst? Like what's the guarantee there? So check that video out to figure out how can you guarantee that you get a business analyst job, right? And I have answered that in that video, very interesting. This one I'm gonna do, which is question number six and seven, which is, um, sorry, number seven and eight, because I just did six. So seven and eight was when he asked me, how can I get a free version of software that I often see in business analyst job requirements, such as Jira, etc." The reason I ask is to practice with some of the software on my free time, and what software would you recommend? So the good thing about business analysts is that we don't really have that many software that you have to know. Basically Word, Excel, and PowerPoint is all you need really. But because of you know Agile and all this stuff, Jira has become a very important software tool to know. There are other software tools like for testing, like you know, ALM, HP ALM, there's Q test and other stuff. But we're not really testers, you know. We even though we do write UAT testing sometimes. Uh, that can be done in Excel. So there's not really a tool that we have to have to have to use. These are just um, specialized tools that can easily be done in Excel as well. But Jira is a different case. Jira is one where I find that if you know it, you have an edge. You do have an edge. So it's good to know, right? So, excuse me, let me just turn my phone off. So it's good to know Jira. So how can you get a copy of Jira? You know, sometimes you have to invest in your own education. You're not going to get everything free. Sometimes you have to pay the subscription and just get access to the tool. Like some software I think are worth it to pay for are like Salesforce. Like Salesforce is such a well-used uh, CRM tool in any business environment that it's, it makes sense to know it for yourself and even to have your own personal copy. Um, back in the day, they would give you one license for free. But now I think for Salesforce, you have to pay, I don't know, $25 a month or something like that. I, I would pay for that because it is useful for you to get your hands dirty, even though the challenge when you pay for your own software or even when you use a free one is that it doesn't always represent the complexities that you'll find in a real world environment because there'll be many accounts and many data points, all that stuff. So yes, you're not going to get the full um, exposure. But just getting in there, coming up with some dummy data, you know, working a project as if you were in a real world environment might be helpful. You know, at least you know how to get in, you know how to navigate around, you do some courses online, you can do some free YouTube courses and, you know, explore how that works. So, you know, sometimes you have to spend money and it's not always going to be free if you want the, 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 the real value of how to use these tools. So, I would suggest that you can go into Jira. Jira does have, I think it has a free version. I could be wrong on this, but you can go check. But I know that as of now, 2020, you could pay $10 a month and you get up to 10 people. 
So if you you just graduated, if you can find other students who just graduated too, who want who have the same problem that you have, where they don't know how to use Jira, you guys can come up together and you could put together ten dollars. You, I mean, you spend more than that on pizza, right? You spend more than that on coffee. Spend the ten dollars a month that ten people can be in there and go into Jira and practice. Now the question is, okay, where do I get practice material? Well. You know, there are books out there. There are case studies out there. You can go to the IIBA and see any examples. You're not going to know if what you're doing is correct because you don't have a person kind of instructing you, but you can find a ways around that. You could, you could come up with your scenarios. Remember the case study I talked about in the other video where you're doing something, you're at Walmart, you're at, you're shopping on Amazon, you're, you're doing some activity and you think to yourself, this could be better. I could improve this. Now you have the data, you know what you were buying, you know where you were buying it. Put that data in the system, right? Create your user stories around how you're going to improve this process. So you don't always have to wait for someone to hand you a project for you to figure out how to do it. You can come up with your own project. Just, you got to have self will. You got to be creative 2020. 2020 is not a year for you to sit down and be wondering. Like, this is a year for you to think through, strategize. Next year, you're going to be coming bigger and better. Bigger and better 2021, okay? So, Jira is one of those tools I think it's worth it to, to pay for. Salesforce is one of those tools I think it's worth it to pay for. Um, if you're into more of a like data analytics kind of things, which is very closely aligned to business analysis, but not the same. And some companies conflate business and analysis with data analytics. And when you say you're a business analyst, they think you're a data analyst, which is a pet peeve of mine, but you can't escape the fact that they're very tied. They're very close. So you might want to get into Tableau, Power BI, you know, you might want to explore these things. I know, you know, as a new graduate, you may not have the money, but it makes sense to, you know, if they have, they have a free version, go get the free version, go get a trial, whatever. But it makes sense to kind of expose yourself to some of these. And if you have to pay, you may just have to pay. Another one, I have this video actually on uh, software tools. I'm going to put it over here. Software tools every business analyst should know. And in that video, I go through the different tools I think you need to you need to know, you need to be exposed to. Um, and that will give you some of those. So right now, I'm, I'm, I'm sticking with Jira, um, Salesforce. If you're into data analytics, then you go to Tableau or Power BI or it's one of those crystal reports, one of those SAP tools, whichever one you can get to. Um, and for mockups, I would say Balsamic is a good one. Um, there's also MarvelApp.com, M-A-R-V-E-L-A-P-P.com, Marvel App. That's good for coming up with mockups and wireframes. There is also collaboration tools such as Miro board, M I R O, uh, dot com. So you get a board and you can do like, um, brainstorming, but it's hard to do brainstorming by yourself. And I'm assuming you're doing it by yourself. If you can get a group, then the brainstorming makes a, a lot more sense. Um, and also I would encourage you to do lucid chart because they have a lot of pre-built templates for flow diagrams and other things like that. Lucid chart does charge. Uh, I think you can get some things free, but they do charge. Some of these things are worth paying for. Again, some of them are worth paying for. So you need to evaluate if that coffee is worth more than your knowledge, right? Because you're spending the same money on coffee or pizza or dinner that you could spend for a month subscription on one of these tools. So that's up to you. Okay, so that's what I have on software tools. Let me go to the next question, which is going to be, what are the most skills employers look for that you strongly recommend I acquire? What is the best way to acquire the skills? That's going to be the next video. See you over there in a minute. One minute, okay? Come back and join me, okay? Come back. <laughs>